For various reasons over 30 years, I put this dream on hold. That all changed when this came out. The Ghostbusters Proton Pack at a fairly reasonable price, as far as Proton Packs go. And of course, once you get this, you got to get the uniform. And you got to get the other stuff. The belt. I know, it's not gray yet, but it will be. The little key fobs. The gizmo. The knee pads that are actually elbow pads. And research. Is this the right patch for Ghostbusters? Is it bigger? Where can you get the right patch? Where can you get a name patch? Or do you want to be a character? All these things come into play when you get into the Ghostbuster costume realm. There's a lot of great forums where you can get a lot of good details and they give you some hints of where to get this. But this here, this right here, $50. A gizmo can cost you $100. And let's not even go on the proton packs. A realistic proton pack can cost you thousands of dollars. But you don't have to do that. I've come up with ways on how to do the uniform, how to enhance this fairly good start on the proton pack. $15 for these fobs. And I'll show you all the places where you can get the best stuff at the lowest price. And how you can make your own pieces of the costume without spending a lot of money. So I'm going to start a whole series where I go through this, this, publish them one at a time. Maybe you're just interested in finding out how to do this, or the elbow pads, or the gizmo, or how to dye this belt. I'll have all separate videos on that, and if you want all of it, then you can watch them all. So let's get started. Today's project is these knee pads, converting them into the elbow pads, including the black square on the back. So let's go to a top-down shot and get into all the details. I bought these knee pads on Amazon. They're Canon Sports. You're going to have to take the label off as a first step. You can use a knife, a straight edge, and just kind of cut it off. And it takes a bit of time. I've also heard you can use a blow dryer or some sort of heat gun and soften that up. So I'm going to do that now and see how it does. After several minutes on the highest setting of a blow dryer, pretty beefy one at that, it's not really coming off. It's just as easy to thinly slice into it. Like that. Just be patient and cut off the decal. And it will look like that when you're done. Both pads are done and you can stop right there. Or you can take it to the next level. These have long elastic areas. The one on the Ghostbusters and shorter. I want to finish that hole off. I took a stretchy fabric, in this case an old black sock. This is on a two liter bottle and the reason why is because it's easier to control. You can kind of pivot around to do these next steps. I decided I'm going to fill this in and, you, and I tested a bunch of things. Permanent markers, whether or not they bled, leather dye for black shoes. I've put it there. Here's the finished square using the black Magnum Sharpie marker. I'll post down below. These are kind of hard to find, but Amazon has them at a fairly reasonable price. So that's the difference between not doing the square and doing the square. You can see that I have a paper towel underneath here to soak up any extra marker so that it's not going to give me a rough edge. As for the sewing, nothing fancy here. I like how it's on the bottle. I'm just going to start underneath here. Try to get as close to this elastic line as I can. Pull it through. Rethread your needle two or three times. I like shorter lengths of thread than longer lengths of thread. I just find it's more manageable. I'll do that all the way around and then the hole is finished. No matter how you choose to apply the black, the hardest part is just measuring out that square. Not every knee pad is the same. You're going to have it on your elbows and so the only time anybody will see whether it's right or wrong is when your costume's off. That's pretty good. With the thinner marker and draw a line to define the border and I'm following the tape and take your time doing this so you get it right. It's time to do the heavy marking with the magnum marker. Take your time. See that white? 
you want to make sure it soaks into all those places. You're probably going to have to go over it a couple times to get it to that level. I peeled off the tape and boy, these markers are the way to go. Not paint, not stain. This is almost perfect. And I kind of like that I filled that circle in. I put paper towel underneath to make sure that nothing bled through. And here you can see that it did. So pretty much everybody has two liter bottles. Well, that's one of the reasons why I use that as a form. Yep, not as much as the other one. Before I took it off the bottle, I did scotch guard to make sure that everything got locked in. No white showing when you stretch it. You could leave it like this, you're gonna hand stitch it. Got them right where I want, and now I've got some black thread. I've put in some safety pins here to mark it, and I'm just gonna go right through here and lock in the fold over. And I'm gonna make this kind of a loose stitch knowing that this is going to stretch a little bit. It's sewn up on the black side and it's sewn up on the pad side. I just used white string for that on both sides. This is kind of tedious. So I figure I'm going to use some double sided hemming tape. I'm just going to lay it in here and we'll see how that does. Always trying out options. I've used this in other projects with great success. Enough. There it goes. The tape and then I'm just going to fold it over. Make sure it's in place and press it down. So if you're not into sewing, or you're not a good sewer, this hemming tape would be your answer. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's just as good as the sewing. If for some reason this wears out, I'll post an update video indicating whether the sewing is going to be better than the hem tape. This is certainly faster, but this may be better long term. And originally I sewed it all the way across here. I'm thinking maybe you just need two spots right here on this side and right here on this side. That's going to hold it in place. So now that we've completed the elbow pads, the only other projects left is completing the gizmo, upgrading the proton pack, and finishing the uniform. Those videos will be up here and down below when they become available. You can also check out my key fob and belt video, both down below and up above. Thumbs up and comments always appreciated. Thanks for watching. If you're interested, and all sorts of cosplay costume builds, home repairs, evaluation and design of sports gear and photography equipment, making and breaking things. Check out my channel and please subscribe because you never know what crazy costume ideas and projects you might see.